From the Fans Talk Podcast family at fanstalkpodcast.com, this is episode 33 of Fans Talk TNA. And this week, we're going to cover the June 10th, 2015 episode of Impact Wrestling on Destination America as rest as well as the rest of the news and notes that happened this week in TNA. My name is Garvin. With us, as always, is Nick. Say hello, Nick. Howdy, howdy. If you enjoy this episode and want to hear more, you can find us at fanstalktna.com. And if you really like this episode uh, and you want to see the series continue, just head on over to patreon.com forward slash fanstalk and drop a few dollars our way. It would be much, much appreciated. So. Here's what happened in uh, this week in TNA. This was the Destination uh, X episode. So basically, uh, it was going to be a heavier X Division episode, something we've we've been looking forward to, something that uh, has really been missing from TNA from a long for a long time. Um, it's also the second week that we got Pope on commentary. So real quick, Nick, uh, Pope on commentary. Are, are you are you learning to to like to like him? I'd still rather have somebody else, but I do believe he's improved a little bit since his debut. So if, if he keeps on improving, maybe my opinion will change. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought it was great. I, I think I think he was trying a little too hard uh, to show emotion when like the big spots were happening, especially in the main event between Angle and Aries. It seemed a little forced. But overall, it wasn't bad. I thought. Uh, I thought overall, this is this is my favorite commentator of of the new grouping that we've got. I think you know if they continue uh, working together, the the chemistry is only going to get better. So, all right, well, um, yeah, let's just talk about some of the stories that that took place. Uh, we really didn't get a whole lot more on the Mickey James, James Storm, uh, Magnus story it was more or less uh, a recap of, of what happened last week uh and an acknowledgement from uh josh matthews that mickey's okay she wasn't physically hurt so i know there's a lot of people you know questioning we were questioning like did she die <laughs> was she hurt because it was just so open-ended last week but yeah no no physical harm just uh emotional trauma um yeah so uh, but yeah, today's or I'm sorry, this this week's episode was really heavy on on the X division. So uh, we started a a new tournament to determine who the next X division champion is going to be. Uh, basically, we just had the first round matches, three triple threat matches. The first match was Manic versus Crazy Steve versus Loki, with Loki advancing. Uh, we got DJ Z versus Mandrews versus T Gray Uno, with T Gray Uno advancing. And uh, the return of Grado onto uh, TNA TV. It was Kenny King versus Grado versus Cruz, who is another AAA guy that was that was called up. Uh, Grado won. So, <laughs> what's your thoughts on these three? Loki versus T Gray Uno versus Grado, with the winner of that match, which I, I imagine is going to be next week, will determine who who is the new X Division champion. Yeah, it's an interesting mixture of talent. For one thing, I'm not entirely certain, but I think this might be T. Gray Uno's first win yeah, on TV. I think so too. Uh, secondly, I really wasn't expecting Grado to advance. <laughs> I'm ecstatic as hell about it, but yeah, when you pick when you picture him across the ring from the other advancement, low key, that that's going to be interesting to watch because those two are almost polar opposites in every sense of the word. Yeah, they they did dedicate a lot of time to Grado as far as, um, you know, just just TV time. He was, I think, he was involved in at least three three or four backstage segments where he's prepping for his match. Uh, all of them were pretty much comedy segments, but it, it worked. It was a really nice way to, uh, you know, seriously introduce that character because before you know when they were doing the uk tour it was kind of hard to really determine if this was a character you could get behind just because he was you know he's feuding with al snow like that's it's it's hard to get behind that especially for for the u.s group um that didn't have any knowledge or relationship with the british boot camp stuff so yeah that was very much a play to the home crowd and you're right i think they really wanted to make sure that Greta was somebody that we could relate to this time around. 
and I think it worked. As as far as predictions for the match ahead, yeah, I think this is going to be Tigre Uno's time because it, mm. he got to speak for the first time since right. appearing in the company. He got the streamers after the match. I, yeah, I, I just think this is his moment to become a champion. I I'm okay with that. I I'm, I'm okay with that idea. You know, I don't I don't necessarily want to see Grado win the X Division Championship like in his first match and just because he really didn't do uh he didn't really do a whole lot in this match as far as like you know impact stuff uh it was it was more of like that comedy style so but we've seen Loki as champion um I I don't know if I want to see that again just because last time Loki was champion he was it, it, it had nothing to do with anything it was you know it was just a a uh something that he wore on his shoulder during BDC segments but he never really mm-hmm. you know worked with it so Tigre Uno we really haven't seen what the guy can do um it's just been a you know just an assortment of like tag team matches or random you know uh five six people plus uh battle royal style matches that we've seen with him and yeah he's never really had that opportunity to have like a singles run uh, or a feud or anything like that. So yeah, if if they did if they did put the title on him, I, I think I'd be totally fine with that. All right. So outside of the X division, we also had the knockouts uh, continue their feud. Mainly, this was uh, you know Taryn had promised that she was going to basically give the the crowd what they wanted, get Kong what they want or what she wanted, which was a uh, knockouts championship shot, but she put a uh, a stipulation on that, and that is the match is going to be a lingerie match, and uh, Kong had to wear this red piece of lingerie um, in the match. Thoughts? <laughs> Thoughts on this? <laughs> I like the character development going on here. Uh, Terrence excelling in this character, and we got a little bit of uh, interaction with Marty. Yeah, which I think is is desperately needed, both for her and for Jade. But I, I don't know this teasing at the the bad old days of women's wrestling when it was all just putting matches and bra and panties matches and all that nonsense. I don't really like how TNA keeps toying with that idea every six months or so. Yeah, and I, it's interesting that Brooke was the one to come out and. <laughs> Yeah, speak out against it, considering that she's been reduced to look at her butt. So I, I don't know. I, I wish TNA would get away from it and put their money where their mouth is. They, they keep talking about sending out people to say, no, we're not about this anymore. We're women rest. We're wrestlers first. Yeah, and I, I wish they would just do that and not keep referencing those bad old days. Yeah, it, it is. It is odd that Brooke was the one to stand up uh, against the dollhouse there. But, you know, um, yeah, I just, I I guess, I I guess it's just ironic. Um, But at at the end of the day, you know, I I was glad that Awesome Kong was not forced to comply, that she wasn't forced to, you know, have to get down to that level. Uh, She came out and pretty much destroyed um, the dollhouse. I didn't actually see her leave her inside, but you know she no. kind of she kind of disappeared, and then Brooke came out. Brooke made a challenge for the title, stripped Taryn uh, of the robe and basically her dignity, um, and then put put a claim on, on on the title. She wants uh you know to have a title shot against Taryn. Do you like that idea, Brooke versus Taryn for the title? I do like that idea because there's there's plenty of basis for it, at least for the feud. Because the dollhouse beat on her friend Rebel, and basically since the dollhouse's inception, Brooke has been involved with them in one fashion or another. Yeah. At first, it was just uh, random throw together tag matches, but then it, it became the story. So, if we're not going to go ahead and get Kong versus Terran one on one, and since Gail is out, uh, she's hurt right now. Brooke makes the most sense because anybody else that's in the division has a storyline going basically the beautiful people. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you look at what appears to be the active feuds, it's either, you know, Angelina love Madison rain versus velvet, 
or you've got the dollhouse versus everyone else, which is mm-hmm. okay, which is okay. You know, I'm, 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 I'm fine with that. But, um, yeah, I, it's just a matter of like, it's just the story that's not, that's, that's not necessarily great. But I, I do agree with you that, you know, Taryn is fitting this role very well. It just seems kind of out of place for Marty and, and Jade. Like, it's almost like that they don't fit in, in that character. Do, do you get that feeling? I do. Maybe it's maybe it's more my familiarity with what they were before coming to TNA. Sure. Like Mia Yim, who, who's Jade now, absolutely was not this character before. She was very she was very similar to Gail in a lot of ways in how she presented herself, and definitely in terms of wrestling ability. So I, I I like that they're trying to develop characters for them, and I like that. Jade is doing something that she hasn't done before, but sure. I I just wish we get to matches already. Yeah, I, I do. I do want to see them do something. Yeah, it does feel like they're just on the side, and um, you know, it's almost a waste. You know. Yeah. So, all right. Well, um, the only other thing that really happened was what was happening uh, with the world title race. So you had uh, you, you had three three major things. You had uh, EC3 continuing to push the idea that he's upset um, that he got skipped over. And then uh, you had Spud. Spud cashed in the exhibition title. Um, this was the opening contest, Spud versus Angle. And then, obviously, Aries in the in the main event. First, y- your thoughts on Spud versus Angle. It, it, that match just reinforced the idea that I really didn't want this cash-in to happen. It... I know wrestling requires a fair amount of suspension of disbelief, but Angle oversold what Spud was doing to him. I, I think there was too much offense on Spud's part that didn't really make sense given who he was inflicting it upon. And I, I fully expected the match result to be what it was. I never really gave much credence to the idea that we'd walk away from that night with Spud as our champion. Right. Right. But I don't, it was okay for what it was, but it never really should have been a thing in the first place. Yeah, agreed. Uh, <laughs> I was I was just as against this move, um, and I, I, I'm with you. I, I thought Spud looked decent. He looked okay, but definitely, definitely overmatched. And uh, yeah, it was. I don't know. It was just it was just disappointing because you you knew. What was happening next? Where this was going to go? I think, I think the better story for me would have been the surprise win because I really love the idea of Slammiversary main event EC3 versus Spud for the title, and I guess they still have time for that, you know that that possibility. But um, I, you know, outside of that, you know that fantasy booking, uh, you know, never going to happen kind of kind of match. Uh, yeah, it. It just shouldn't have taken place. <laughs> yeah, I, it, if if this match absolutely had to take place, which apparently it did, I think Spud should have had more meaningful offense because most of the damage Angle took was inflicted upon, by himself, like Spud dodging and Angle falling to the outside or Angle diving into the ring post. Honestly, the degree to which that took place made Angle look like less of a world champion and a gold medalist and more like a chump. Like he had yeah. no clue what Spud was going to do in response to what he was doing. True. All right. So main event was Angle versus Austin Aries. What about this match? You know, Angle did promise that this would be match of the year quality, uh, maybe even the match of the year. So uh, was it for you? Yeah. It, it Not match of the year quality, but it was definitely a lot better. I think it, it fit the the main event status a lot better. Um, I, there were a few moments where I thought Aries was going to walk out with, with the briefcase and, or, or with the title, excuse me. And I really, I, I almost want to say I wouldn't complain if that had happened, but then again, that would just, it would distract from the tag team angle. And I, and I don't want that. I, I think we had to go ahead and get this cash in out of the way so that he could focus on the tag team series. But yeah, overall I'm satisfied with what we got and 
yeah, it was it was a good main event. Yeah, I think uh, I think overall it, it could be considered, you know, one of if not the best match that TNA has put on. And, and, and you really didn't expect anything less from Aries and Angle. I, I think you know they are uh, pretty much the 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 best wrestlers in the company together. Um, so yeah, I, it it, it was. It, it definitely was uh, a very good match. I was I was a little disappointed that um, Angle won, though. Yeah, it, it is getting to the point where you're starting to question, yeah, okay, what can they do after this? Like, he pulls out the win, sometimes seemingly by the skin of his teeth, against everybody. He's done it against EY. He's done it against Rude, Lashley, Aries, Spud, everybody. So who is left? And obviously, we know who's left. It's EC3. And yeah. I believe EC3 is going to be the one to knock him off his pedestal. But it is getting to the point where I, I'm a tiny bit tired of seeing Angle as champion. Well, to me, I'm I'm a, I'm tired of Aries losing <laughs> these big matches. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I loved Aries as champion. Uh, and yeah, just the fact that I think this is now like, his third time of cashing in uh, either the X Division Championship or a briefcase of some sort to only lose. Um, you know, it's 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 a tired it's a tired angle. I I don't want to see that anymore. So, mm-hmm. But okay, cool. But yeah, as you know, the 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 end of the evening was EC3 coming out and attacking Angle uh, and basically laying claim to to that title shot uh, next week. Uh, we basically have EY versus Chris Melendez. Um, it was suggested that we would get James Storm versus Magnus or at least some kind of confrontation between the two. And then I could be wrong, but I thought that they booked EC3 versus Angle for the title next week. Is that what you heard? I don't recall that, actually. At at, at the very end of the show, when they when they preview the next show, they they talked about... EC3, you know, getting his title shot, but what they showed were clips of them signing contracts, not like together, but like different stages of history when they were in a segment individually the, signing a contract. It was like this weird mesh of like footage from, uh, you know, past years. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so I don't know if this is going to be the contract signing or the title match, but I really hope it's a contract signing. Yeah, I, I highly doubt the title match will be next week because there, there's already enough going on next week. Presumably the X Division title match. I'm assuming we're getting match for the tag team series. And we may get a knockouts title match. Who knows? Um, because I kind of doubt Brooke versus Taryn will be reserved for Slammiversary. I think that'll be I think that'll be Taryn versus Kong. Um but yeah, I'm expecting that EC3 versus Angle will be kept for anniversary. Okay, I just went to uh, I just went to the site, and yeah, it does say contract signing EC3 versus Angle, but then it has a date of July 1st, which is a Wednesday, and that is the <laughs> that is the uh, the show after anniversary. Huh. All right. Someone make sense of that for us because yes, please. If it if it is true, I I don't understand what they're going to be doing at Slammiversary then. Although, hold on, because I'm looking at the at the schedule and I'm no longer seeing Slammiversary. Did they would or could they have rescheduled that? Okay, so if you go to if you go to the site, it is under shows. Uh, the drop down. There is a link for Slammiversary, so there still is a YouTube video there uh, for June twenty eighth. But there's no card. There's no anything else other than a YouTube video. But if you look at the upcoming schedule on the front of the site, it only lists um, it only lists Impact Wrestling. <laughs> okay, this is this is really weird. We're, we're going to have to figure out what's going on here because it has Impact Wrestling on June seventeenth, which is next week. Then June twenty fourth, which is the week after, and then on July first at nine p.m., which is Wednesday, is a new show called Bell to Bell, according to ImpactWrestling.com. Hmm. I yeah, don't know I, what I, that means. I'm I'm assuming Slammiversary <laughs> is taking place as scheduled because I mean they've got that partnership going with Flips, so 
Yeah, I, I assume it's just weirdness with the website. That's crazy. All right. I don't know. I don't know. We can go back to that later. So anyways, um, I think that's it. I think we can go ahead and go into uh, wins and fails. What was your What was your win of the week? I've got a couple. The first one I've got to give to Grado. I'm glad he got the spotlight he got, and I'm, gl- I'm glad we're getting the promise of maybe him sticking around for a while. My second win goes to Bram. Uh, the fact that he's got something going again, although I don't know if it's just me, but he he sounded like he was sloshed for this show. Uh, definitely not as crisp in his enunciation uh, as he usually is, but he seems to have an interesting gimmick going where he'll be calling out past wrestlers. And uh, sub win, I guess, is that we got to see Crimson back for a night. Um, I I think he's improved a lot since we last saw him on TNA TV. Seems like uh, his work down at OBW really improved. Yeah, I um, I, I actually did enjoy a Crimson match. I've never been able to say that before. Uh, <laughs> I thought I thought he did pretty well. Yeah, for sure. So it it is neat, but at the same time, like this feels very similar to EC3 going after past stars. Uh, so I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, I, I I do like Bram getting involved in stuff, but. I don't think we need to see returning people come in. I, I would almost, I don't know. Do we need another title? Do we need like a, a, a like something in between the X division and the world title race for a guy like Bram? It's tempting to say yes, because there are guys that are caught where it, it might not make the most sense for them to go after the X division title. They're not big enough in terms of physical size or in terms of name recognition to go after the world heavyweight championship. But I don't want a situation where you've got a TV title that's not being defended, like not even every week on TV, but like defended ever. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to say. Yeah. I mean, overall uh, the, the roster is, is a bit thin. Uh, we, we're actually recording this live and beanbags is in the live chat. Uh, but thank you, Beanbags, for joining. Uh, yeah, he's saying like the roster is too thin. I, I totally agree with that. Like, it, it, it's weird. You, you've got Bram, but then you know I don't know who else I would see putting over there. Maybe like an Anderson. Uh, maybe that's where you fit Ey and Chris Melendez for the time being. Yeah, but there's Samuel Shaw. There's Samuel um, Shaw. Yeah, Jesse Goddard's. True that. Oh the, yeah, the, yeah. For, there's, I totally there's forgot about, guys, about Jesse. But- yeah. But still, it's it's another thing, you know. There's just not enough TV time as as well. So I don't know. I don't know. But okay, uh, my, my win of the week, uh, I've I've I had two as well. Um, I did like the Bram segment. I, I like the match between him and Crimson. Um, I'm kind of unsure how I feel about the the story overall, but I just like him being proactive and and doing something and trying to make a name for himself. At the same time, um, I liked Jesse. Uh, I liked his his attack on DJZ. Um, the dude is ripped now. I, I feel like he mm. he has completely toned up since the last time we we've seen him. Um, yeah, he looks awesome. So I I hope this is uh this is a beginning of something good for him, like a good singles run. Uh, I think that's that's much needed for for a guy like Jesse. So okay, fails. What was your fail of the week? I think by default it. Well, not even default. I've got two fails as well. Uh, the first goes to the knockouts. Guess the whole tease of the laundry pillow fight thing. Women's wrestling in general needs to get away from that. The second one goes to the first X Division qualifier match. I thought that was a real letdown, especially given who is involved, namely Loki and Manic. Crazy Steve, I don't really expect much from him anymore, even though he he is a good athlete, and I think he presents enough of a twist in his offense that his placement is merited. But that was a real short match, and I don't know it. Nobody felt really involved in it. Yeah, I think for my fail, um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. I don't have a a, a major fail. Uh, you know, I, I don't actually agree with what's happening with the knockouts, but I'm not not completely against it. You know, um, so I don't know. I I, I think I think overall I, I was okay with this week. No, no, no major fails. Uh, okay, 
Any, any final thoughts before we head out? Uh, no, that'll do it. Cool. And that's all the time we have for this edition of Fans Talk TNA, but the conversation does not have to stop here. You can join us over on YouTube as we continue the conversation with you. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Instagram. All of those links are available on fanstalktna.com. For Nick, this is Garvin, and we will see you guys next week. Later. Later.